Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impart your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 0363659 Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. I just want us to pray before I give my testimony. Shall we close our eyes and pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I bless your holy name for a beautiful day like this. Thank you, O Jehovah, because you have helped me. You have given me the grace even to be in this situation. And Father Lord, I thank you. Because the situation I am and all the things that I pass through is to glorify your name. Father, I bless you. Thank you for your wives that are here to listen to this testimony. I pray it will edify them. It will encourage them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, all the testimony, O Lord, I cover with the blood of Jesus and at the end your name will be glorified and more things you will do in our lives in Jesus name praise the Lord praise the Lord yes we really thank God and my special appreciation to God because when this letter was given to me uh, that I should give the testimony of my widowhood and in the letter it was said I should make it short. I said, ah, how can this be? Because my testimony, in fact, it will take a whole day. But by the grace of God, I know God will help me. I will make it snappy. And God will help you as you listen in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Yes. Uh, uh, I'm a mother, I'm happily married, sometimes in 1979. And we came here with my husband. And presently, I'm blessed with five children. I had two sets of twins. They are big ones. They are big now. So I really give God the glory. But, but before my husband died, all these children, five of them, they were in secondary school. The, first, the last set of twins, they were in GS2. And when my husband took ill, we were in the hospital. I was even telling him, I said, ah, I calculated all the amount we will be spending every time. I said, ah, this is the amount you'll be spending every time, but this is much. I didn't know that everything was coming on me. So the following week, he died. Immediately after he's dead, I entered into another problem. No, in the problem, the problem is not just any other thing, but you know, from the villagers, the in-laws, and so on and so forth. Because the, when he died, and the day he was to be buried, I wore something white with a black hair tie and everything. I didn't know that it was a crime for somebody to wear something like that. They were surprised. They've never seen anything like that. They were saying, ah, how can you dress like this? How can you wear white on, your, uh, on the day of your husband's burial? You're supposed to be in black and be mourning, be wailing, crying, rolling on the ground. But they didn't see this thing in me. So they were angry. They summoned a meeting and called me that, yes, we want to ask you whether there was a quarrel between you and our brother before he died. But I really thank God. God gave me the grace and that boldness. I told them, I said, yes, you didn't know. If I had had something better than this, I would have wore it that day. And if any of you feel that my husband's death is nothing and I don't feel any pain, please pray for your husband to die. Then you will know how painful it is. 
So they could not say anything. They immediately they ended the meeting. I said, okay, let us pray. And they prayed. And we all moved out. That ended that aspect. But that, that was not the whole thing. Many of them gathered. They said, hey, no, the man died. I was not rolling on the ground. Hey, I, I didn't cry. <laughs> I said, yes, I will not roll on the ground. Because I don't want you to rob me with your witchcraft hand. You want to kill me as you have done to my husband. So this one closed their mouth. Because even that particular time, I was very, very wide. They didn't know. They didn't know how much pain I was undergoing. You know, but I really thank God because I saw these things that it was just the work of the enemy. But God saw me through. I really thank God. The matter did not end there. Because even the widowhood of a thing, they still believe that you should shave your hair, tie something black, and so on, so that, so that you look miserable. And anything black, I don't really like it. I can't tie something black on my, maybe around my wrist or my neck. So I disagree with them. They say, ah, okay, we we'll wait for you until that 40th day. So I started praying. I just lost my husband. I went into fasting. Three days, total fast with nine VGs. I started praying. I said, God, intervene. And God was revealing their secrets. How they set a trap. They said, yes, they are waiting for me. And I prayed. I said, God, your name will be glorified that day. I don't want to see all these people. Lo and behold, when that day came, all of them ran away. I couldn't see all these old women that were gathered the first day to give me widowhood of faith. They all ran away. So I really thank God. So this matter continued like that. And God has been helping me. After all this persecution and all that, I started thinking. I said, God, where am I going to stay? Because my husband was working with a company. So he worked with them for a good 16 years. So I was thinking of where to move to. No accommodation. My children are still in the uh, secondary school. Where do I go to? Where do I move to? I come back to the town because of many things that I've been hearing. At that time, I needed a job with the company. But this will not come. After some time, they gave me a notice to pack out. Though I've been praying to God, I said, God, let your will be done. I, it, it wasn't the work that I really need, but I needed an accommodation. I thought if this company could give me work, the accommodation would be given to me also. But it wasn't so. So I've been praying to God, God, direct my ways, but God too spoke to me, say I should be still. After some times, uh, they brought uh, another letter that I should quit. So I started pleading with them. One afternoon I was in the school, I saw uh, a man from the company, play, a policeman, and other maintenance uh, workers. I didn't know they came for me. They went straight to my headmaster. Then my headmaster came to me and said, Ah, madam, these people are looking for you. And I went there. The DPO told me that we are giving you 24 hours to pack out of the, the house. I said, Ah. I told the DPO, I said, why 24 hours? I said, this 24 hours will not be okay for me. Even if I had come here with a bag, at least I had to look for accommodation before I move out. No, I'm not, I didn't just come here with a bag. I have children, I have those, even my husband property, they are there. How do I move out? He said, yes, madam, I have spoken. If you fail to come by 7 a.m. To, tomorrow morning, if you are still found in that house, we are going to pack you out. I answered him. I said, look, my God will not allow you to pack me out. He said, Mother, why are you talking like this? You are talking as if this God is for you alone. I said, if you know that it's for you, you can equally claim him. So the man left. I left the school immediately. I was worried. I got home. I started crying. I was weeping. I said, God, it is today that I will know the God I'm serving. It is today that I will know who has been speaking to me. I started crying. So I gathered my children. I said, children, do you know what you are going to do? When it is 5 p.m., all of you should enter the vehicle. We are going to the MD's house. They agree with me. So when it was 5 p.m., we moved down to the MD's house. MD was not there. I said, let's move to the deputy MD's house. 
Thank God, when I got there, he was not there. But I met the wife. The, ma- the wife was marveled. He said, ah, ah, what type of thing is this? He said, go sit down. My husband will soon be here. She gave us food. We ate that night. So when the husband came, I narrated the story. He was marveled and bitter. He said, ah, this is an emotional case. Why should they behave like this? That is not aware of it. I said, okay. He said, I should go. Nobody will pack me out. Ah, I was not satisfied. So he gave me a written note. I went back. Then I went back to the MD's house. Thank God, he now came back. He himself told me that he didn't know anything about it. Because I went to him. I said, please, look for accommodation for us. You said that we should be packed out. So get us accommodation. My husband worked with you for 16 years. Direct me where to go. The man told me he didn't know anything about it, that I should go and the matter would be settled. So I went, nothing happened. On the third day, I was just in school again, I saw a luxurious bus with policemen and uh, some boys. They said they have come that I should move to the house because they are ready to pack my things out now. Ha! I say again, it's what? It was a disgrace. The most miserable day of my life. So I say, uh uh-uh. What are you chasing me about? I am not a criminal. My husband worked with you for a good 16 years. He was neither dismissed nor terminated. He died on active service. Please go and pack whatever you want to pack. So I left them and I moved to my friend in the town. How I drove to the town that day, only God knew. Because I was weeping, I was calling on God. Are you no longer the husband of, of the widow? God. I started crying, crying. So when I got to my friend, my friend uh, encouraged me that I should allow them to pass the load to your house. I said, God forbid. If God will not do this thing. So let them pack my things there. I will wait for MD until he comes and remove me from that place because I don't have any other person. So when I went back home, to my surprise, nothing was touched in my house. So I asked my sister, I said, who are these people who said they were coming to pack my teeth? That She said when they came, she opened the door that they should come in, but they refused. I said, ah, God, you are good. So I sat down, I was waiting for them to come and pack those teeth. But glory be to God, they did not come. So after this matter, I said, God, I have waited enough. If not that you said I should be still, for me, I will have moved out. I said, you have to prove yourself now. I said, now, if it is your will that I should move out, you will provide an accommodation for me. And the accommodation you are going to provide, I'm not going to go out to look for accommodation. I will be in my house, then somebody will come and give me key that he has gotten accommodation for me, and this is the key. So I sat down. I was waiting. I didn't go. Three days after, some group of Yoruba came that, yes, we heard of what happened. So can we start looking for accommodation for you now? I said, no. I don't need accommodation now until I hear from God. They left. Two weeks after, after service, a man, the man is late now, may so rest in peace, he called me and gave me a bunch of key that he has a house at Adika, very close to GG, uh, CCG, two bedroom flat that I should go and stay there. Then I should check if I'm not satisfied with it. I should look for accommodation. Any accommodation I get at all, he will pay for one year. Praise the Lord! I collected the key. I went to that house. I opened it with my children and with my friend. We inspected the house. I saw it. I said, no, this house is too small for me. Because if Jesus is my husband, uh-uh. He can do all things. He can provide all things. I should live in a better house than people that have earthly husbands. Because my Jesus is all in all. So I look at it. I say, two bedroom flat will not be sufficient for me and my children. So the man said, okay. So you know, I can, I'm not making a choice I'm, because I'm not a beggar. So I started looking for a house. Luckily, I got a house at Adeka here. And they told me 22,000 naira. And before this time around, some people came and said, okay, anytime you get accommodation, at least let me give you this 10,000. 
They gave me 10,000 as part of the accommodation uh, deal. Ah, I said, thank God. Another brother came. He gave me 10,000 naira. Make it 20,000 naira. Then when this man who promised that any house I get that he will pay for it. When I got the accommodation, he gave me the 22,000 naira for the accommodation. Praise the Lord! Yes, you can see that our God is good. This Jesus we have as our husband is an able husband. He's a, a husband that will not fail you, that will not disappoint you. That when he says this, that is what he's going to do. He's faithful. If you are faithful too to serve him, he's ready to provide all things for you. And I really thank God that was how God solved my accommodation problem. So in the area of in-laws, I told you earlier on that I had problems. Even the one that I was looking on to, he now one day told me that I was responsible for my husband's death. I asked him how. He started to, he said so many things. I went, I cried unto God, I started fasting, I, go, I said, God, you have to prove yourself. That this man now said, I killed my husband. I said, God, prove yourself. In fact, I was weeping, I felt that the, the, the heavens should open so that I will follow Jesus. I was fed up with life, I wanted to die, I wanted to even leave the country, but I had no money. I didn't know that God was preparing me for something. Her sister was with me then. I told her, I said, she will always tell me, he said, it will soon come to pass. One day I said, why will it come to pass? Why will all this thing come to pass? That I'm responsible for my husband's death? For what? Is it to inherit his property or whatever? But finally, finally, God took control. I didn't know that I would be able to forget, forget and forgive that my brother. But God gave me the grace. He took the grace of God. But I thank God for forgiving him. Praise the Lord. I also want to talk in the area of sex. You know, many women, I see widows, you know that I, that I can't do without a man. I cannot do without a man. I can't stand alone. Even God himself says, two are better than one. And he has allowed this man to go. I can't stay like that. The Bible is not against it that you should be married. I mean, you should remarry. But for you to be moving about, this is wrong. But I thank God in this area, God has given me the grace. Because immediately after my husband's death, I stood. I said, God, where can I get something in the Bible that talks about the widow? The Holy Spirit gave me immediately. He gave me first Timothy chapter 5, which I read. When I came to that uh, verse that says, any bad widow that is, uh, you know, moving about, living in pleasure, is dead. Why, why she thinks she's alive? That, that fear gripped me as if I've never heard such words before. I was afraid. I said, no, God, give me the grace. And God has given me the grace. I don't even think about it. I don't, in fact, I don't really know whether any man is existing. I really thank God for that. So, praise the Lord. I also thank God for my children that God has blessed me with. Immediately after their father died, I said, God, I'm just a vessel. I'm just a caretaker to these children. They are for you. Take care of them. And since then, God has been caring for us and my children. Praise the Lord. Yes, in terms of feeding, finance, God has been blessing us. We've never lacked. And God has been providing our needs. He's faithful. He's faithful. If you see me, sometimes the way I address Jesus, you'll be surprised. I call him darling. And you know, when I want to pray, I say, darling husband, all this, you know, just like that. And I, you know, I read the Bible. I say, you said this. Your word said this. So you have to fulfill your word. And God has been faithful. God has been faithful. He's a faithful husband. And I will serve him forever and never. In Jesus' name. Yes, because my time is limited. Though the testimony is very, very long, but I'm going to make it snappy. Sometimes I fell into a trap. I will say a hand of a 419 boy. I didn't know, even if you are serving God, doesn't mean that devil cannot tempt you or come your way. But it is now that I realize that God allowed it for a purpose. Sometimes in, 19, in, uh, in the year 1999, a fake copper 
came to our church and introduced himself as a copper. We realized he was not a copper. He came with another copper. And he gave his life, he gave his testimony that he was a court leader at Obafo Miawolowo University. He even told me that his father was the national president of uh, Oboni. And he told me that he was serving in peace house. You know, that he was redeployed from Ilori. And when he came to peace house, he was given a letter to Brother Bile. Brother Bile didn't want to accept him initially. But because of the letter I collected from my brother, Brother Gile now accepted him. And he has been serving here. That was what he told us in the church. So the church members, we prayed. We prayed for him. And uh, since then, he has been coming to church. Very vibrant. Leading our praise worship. One day, he told me that uh, Brother Gile uh, gave him an assignment. That he should prepare and pass for five people. I asked him. I said, ah. Does uh, do, um, do you make Christian to give a uh, hand pass in the church? He said yes. That even that day he was coming that to meet uh, our sister, Sister Akane, that she was the one that gave him that uh, 15,000 to prepare hand pack for five people. I say ah, every time this boy will call and tell me that he, he was coming to this house to receive phone call that uh, Sister Akane will say, okay, hold on for your caller, all these things. He was giving me, you know, the current information about this house. Even that particular time, I think Brother Bile traveled. He told me that he traveled. I didn't know that he was not even a copper. He didn't know anything about this house. But he was cutting with another copper. So he kept com coming to my house, telling me stories. I asked him, have you given your life totally to me? He said, yes. So I gave him some Christian books that he was reading. He told a lot of lies. Even one time he told me that he had no Bible, that he preached to a prostitute. And the prostitute demanded for a Bible. So he now gave him his Bible. So one day he came to my house. He came to, to my house that he was traveling to Abuja, that he has not been paid for some time, that I should loan him 3,000 naira. I gave to him, despite the fact it was not convenient for me, but I thought I was doing good. I was doing the work of God, who says we should be hospitable. I didn't know that I was doing it to a wrong person. So I gave it to him, and see then, he was coming to my house. Anytime he comes, I give him food, the little food, because the youth are always in my house. So one day, he told me he was traveling to Abuja to process his uh, uh, salary that he has not been paid. So he, he told me that any time, since he has given his life to Christ, that he told God that whenever he is traveling, God should reveal to him if the journey will be successful. So otherwise, he will not go. So he left me that, that night. So the following morning, I was going to school. On my way, I heard somebody, you know, calling mommy, mommy, mommy. He dressed in a copper's dress on the bike and stopped me. And he told me that the journey couldn't go again, no, because he learned that his salary has been paid. I said, okay, he entered the vehicle with me. We drove to school. So after a while, he told me, say, ah, please, mommy, oh, can I make use of your car? I said, ah, I said, my car. And before then, I called him, I gave him a Bible. I said, you told me the other time that you had no Bible. I said, I have one for you. He collected it. I said, oh, thank you, ma. Then he came, he said, please, can I make use of your car? I said, to where? He said, eh, you know, I told you, brother, Billy gave me an uh, assignment that I should prepare hampers, that I want to go there to collect the basket. I didn't want to give him the khaki because he's not even part of me. I don't give my khaki to anybody. And secondly, I don't welcome visitors, especially men in my house, except you are, you know, real Christian, born again. But his son, I didn't really know. So I said, okay. I said, please, don't be long. I gave him the key. He said, he will be back before 10. I said, okay. When it was 10, I didn't see this boy. 11, I didn't see him. 12, I didn't see him. 1 o'clock. When it was 1.30, when we closed, I said, uh, uh, where has this boy gone to now? He knows that we are closing 1.30. I didn't see him. So I went home. When I got home, I was waiting for him. I didn't see him. I lay down. I started thinking. I said, maybe this boy deceived me and took my car to Makudi and I had a problem. I waited and waited. I didn't see him. I told my son when it was, it was 5 p.m. I said, go and check in the copper's house where this boy was lodging and check in there. Then my son came back to me and said, ah, when he got to the house, oh, he saw somebody. And the person said the boy came in a car. He packed his things. He said he was going to Abuja, from Abuja to Lagos. Ah, 
I said, Jesus. I said, no, this cannot be. This cannot be. I waited for that day. I didn't see this boy. I sent to the brethren in the church. They came. We started praying. We went to the police. The policeman said they will not take any official report because the car was not snatched. I rendered the key until after 24 hours. That night I could not sleep. I was crying unto God. I said, God, prove yourself. But I was expecting a knock at my door that this boy will come and say, yes, he had a problem with the car. But nothing was that, like that. So the following day I went to the police station. I reported the matter. And they took official report. And since then, I was praying to God. I said, God, you have to prove yourself. I sent to the peace house immediately. They told me that they had no copper. I said, Jesus. So you mean this boy is not a copper? I went to Makudi. First of all, I went to the secretary at Boko. They told me, yes, they know him. He has become me as a copper. Do you know that even the CLO, the zona inspector, did not know that this boy was not a copper. He has been attending the RCD until this my incident happened. Even other, all other coppers didn't know. I went to Makudi, they brought out all the files. This boy, no way. I started praying to God. I said, God, you must do something. You are the husband of the widow. I called my son. I said, come, let us go into fasting. We went into seven days fast and with prayers. And every morning, we opened to Exodus 22, 22. And I lifted it beforehand. We joined hands with him. I said, God, this is your word. If this is not your word, don't honor it. But if this is your word, you have to honor it. Because this boy has taken the advantage of my widowhood. Which you said nobody should take the advantage of a widow. I said, but this boy has done it. He even lied against a man of God. For this, you have to prove yourself. I started praying because this boy took the car away on the 11th of November, 1999. I prayed and prayed, but nothing happened. The first month, the second month, the third month, the fourth month, the fifth month. I said, God, won't you do something? At times, I will go to my room. I will cry. I will roll on the ground. I said, God, you have to prove yourself. Because many people said I was befriending this boy. I said, God, you have to prove yourself. You have to prove yourself that there is nothing between me and this boy. I said, if there was anything between me and this boy, let him go with this car. But if nothing, it is just the love of God that I have for this boy, you must bring my car back. So I started praying. Then my brother-in-law came from Lagos that we should publish it from, uh, uh, I mean, in the pond and uh, Concord. I told him no. I said, if Jesus is the husband of the widow, he should go around and search for my car and bring it. I said, I'm not going to publish anything. I'm not going to bother myself moving about, searching for any car. Let Jesus bring that car. Oh, God is good. So on the 11th of August, now at year 2000, exactly nine months, I was at the redemption camp in Lagos. I heard my name, Mrs. Bia Rajai, go to information office. And somebody is looking for you. When I got there, I saw my friend Mrs. Okebu, who came from Asaba, to call me. She told me that your, she said, your car has been recovered. <laughs> I said, Jesus, you mean my car has been recovered? How? And where? He said, it was Asaba. It was Gideon Okebu, a 10-year-old boy, that saw it at filling station. So I quickly moved down to Asaba. When I got to Asaba, I saw the car. The number was not changed. The color was not changed. Everything intact. For good nine months, this boy has sold it to somebody. Another person sold it to another person at Asaba. But God kept this car for good nine months and nothing happened to it. God made them foolish. They did not change the number. They did not change the color. Rather, it was renovated. Pray! Praise the Lord! Yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord! Yes. You can see that God is wonderful. And of a truth is the husband of the widow. Will you choose him tonight to be your husband? Those of you who are relying on men, have you seen my case? I didn't rely on any man. I told Jesus, go and do it. And he did it. If you surrender your life today to Christ, and you take him as your husband, and you are faithful with him, he will not fail you. And he will not let you down. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! To God be the glory.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Do you think that God just has favorites among his wives? Do you think God has favorites among his wives? What he has done to our sister, don't you think he can do it for you? He will do it much more in Jesus' name. If you notice it in the testimony of our sister, one thing is paramount. What, what is that? Prayer. Did you notice? Right from the time her husband died, she went into praying. At each point in time, you saw her crying to God. You saw her praying to God. You saw her reminding God of her promises. Now, I want us to look at one scripture in Matthew. I mean, look. Look chapter 11. Look at Luke chapter 11. We start reading from verse 5. The Bible says, And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight? And say unto him, Friend, let me three loaves. For a friend of mine in his journey is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, Though you will not rise and give him, because of because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needed. And I say unto you, ask and he shall be given you, seek and he shall find, knock and he shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you, that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more? Shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? Praise the Lord. You know, Jesus was teaching His disciples a secret. He says, A friend, a friend went to another friend. He said, Look, friend, oh, and this was midnight. Toward midnight, he came knocking at the door, saying, My friend, please wake up. Please help me. I have a need. I have a need at this midnight hour. My house is so dry, and yet I have a visitor. He needs to eat. He is on a long journey. He has walked. He is so tired. He must eat. But I am wretched. I have nothing. There is nothing in my house. Please rise up. Give me that I can give to this friend. And the Bible says, this friend, and in the first instance, the refusal said, No, can't you see? It is midnight. I have nothing. I mean, I, I, I am sleeping. My children are even here with me. I can't wake up. If I wake up now, I will wake them up too and they will start crying. I cannot. But this friend that is coming to ask, the Bible says he will not go back. He will not give up and say, Toh, what will I do? He will not go back crying and say, Ah, Toh, what will I do? He won't go back to his friend and say, Please, just sleep with your stomach, your flat stomach t- 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 tomorrow. Jesus said, The friend continued. He continued knocking. He continued knocking. Midnight is when the darkness is thickest, isn't it? At the point you lose your husband, it's like you have entered a midnight. Where everybody is sleeping. There is no one you can raise an alarm and you can come up quickly. There is no one around you. It's like everywhere is so thick, darkened. You cannot even see the way. You cannot see someone else to discuss with. You can't see someone to ask to come and help you. And yet there is a friend you can go to. And we see our sister, from the first moment, the the very first time when her husband died, when the devil arranged for women to come and begin to trouble her heart, she went into prayers. Before the 40th day, she went into prayers. 
And at this point as she prayed, God shut off the mouth of the enemies. Didn't he? When you go into prayers over a matter, God will not leave you helpless. He said he's a friend. He's a friend in need. We have a saying that a friend in need is a friend indeed. Isn't it? How many of us have friends around? Have they always proved to be friends indeed to us? Have they not always given us excuses at the point that we are in their knees? They will give you a long list of problems that they also have. That they must tackle first of all. But Jesus Christ, a friend indeed to the widow. At the midnight hour, when you are in dire need, when you are in whatsoever dire need, as you go to him and you persist and you do not give up, he shall rise up and give you much more than you need. Praise the Lord. For he is able, abundantly able, to deliver those who trust in him. He doesn't just give you a ration. He will give you in abundance. We see that happen in the life of our sister. In the issue of our commission, we saw what happened. How she was so bold. You know, when you are praying, you have boldness. Isn't it? Prayer brings boldness in the life of a person. Prayer brings boldness in the life of a widow. Who doesn't know what will happen tomorrow? She was so bold. As if there was something that was inside of her that was pushing her. But there was nothing like that. She simply trusted God. And because she trusted God, whenever she prayed, she refused to be kicked about. How many times have you, have you been allowed yourself to be kicked about? With opinions of men. With suggestions of people. And it never led you anywhere. You always were frustrated. But because she was bold in the Lord because she prayed, she knew that the God she is praying to is the God that hears and answers prayers. When you pray over anything, do you believe that God is the God that hears and answers prayers? When you believe that God hears and answers prayers, no matter how long God tarries, you will always wait patiently. And know that God in His time will cause all things to work out beautifully for you. We saw it in our sister. She got the best. In fact, it's not as if, I don't think our sister was just thinking big. Do you think she was just thinking big? She wasn't just thinking big. She was only addressing God in, in the way God is. And God heard her prayer. Now we see Jesus Christ again saying in Luke 18 and verse 1. We look at Luke 18 from verse 1. Talking about prayer again. Jesus spoke specifically about a widow in this scripture. I wonder why is Jesus Christ bringing a widow to teach us about prayer? Jesus expects that a widow should learn to cling to the Lord. That no matter what happens, you should cling to the Lord in the place of prayer. We saw what happened here. The Bible says, and he spoke a parable unto them, to these wives, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Praise the Lord. That widows ought always to pray and not to faint. You can faint while praying, isn't it? And yet Jesus is saying you ought always to pray and not to faint. And he now brings up a, a, an issue. He said there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city. And they came, the same, the, and she came unto him saying, Avenge me on my adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward he said, within himself, Though I fear not man, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubled me, I will avenge him, lest by, the, by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge says, And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he be long with them. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ said, He will hear speedily. 
when his own very elect cry out to him day and night do you know that you are an elect of God do you know that that God has elected you for a special purpose that God has a special place in your life I mean a special place in, 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 for you in, 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 in his life in his heart that to God you are an elected person what does it mean to be an elected person when they do a lean election and someone emerges the winner how does that person feel he feels very happy isn't it he feels honored he feels elevated and God says you are his very elect why will God come and give us this analogy and will use a widow God's expectation upon your life is that you should cling unto him no matter how long God tarries in answering your prayer you should do what? you should cling unto him and continue to pray day and night our sister never gave up when she lost her car and she gave us a testimony for nine good months she refused to go out of her way to look for help from anybody from any person she looked unto God alone and she, she waited on God and God proved herself several times we do not receive answers to our prayers because we give up too quickly praise the Lord God must help us we, can, we, should, we, we, we must not give up praying easily we must not lose heart so easily whenever we are praying over any issue whenever we are crying to God for any matter when we read in, in, in Luke 11 Jesus said ask and you will receive seek and you will find knock and the door shall be opened unto you anyone that asks the Bible says he receives if you ask and you don't receive it is not a problem of the Lord Jesus Christ because he says anyone that asks receives suppose her sister stopped asking after the three months and after the third month and she gave up she may not have got that car don't you think so she may have lost it forever but she clung to God in prayer now that in the verse 8 Jesus said I tell you that he will avenge them speedily Jesus will avenge you speedily as you continue to pray day and night without ceasing praise the Lord but look at what the Bible says nevertheless when the son of man cometh shall he find faith on the earth faith faith is very, is very important faith must go with your prayer praise the Lord faith must follow your prayers when you pray in faith you have grace to wait upon the Lord patiently when you doubt not the Lord and what promises he gives and you pray in faith you have grace to wait on the Lord until he rises up to prove himself as I was telling God God prove yourself God prove yourself do you know that God can prove himself in your situation do you believe that God can prove himself in your own situation no matter what it is no matter what it takes no matter how long it takes God can prove himself in your own situation but you must have faith look at Hebrews Hebrews chapter 11 Hebrews 11 you must pray without ceasing, without giving up but you must pray you must have faith in the Lord you must have faith in what the Lord says Hebrews 11 Now before Hebrews 11 You look at Hebrews 10 The Bible says in verse 30, 38 Says now The just shall live by faith But if any man draw back my soul shall have no pleasure in him. 
But ye are not of them that draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Praise the Lord. Say now. It is not tomorrow. It is when. Now the just shall live by faith. Now the just shall live by faith. Are you a just person? Are you just before the Lord? The just shall live by faith. Not by sight. Not by their own strength. Not by what they can do. Not by struggle. Not by fighting. Not by defending themselves. But by faith. And God rewards faith. He said the just shall live by faith. Our sister... Our sister's faith was rewarded. Was it not? Her faith has been rewarded. She gave us testimony of even her children. To have twins. And they are all finished secondary school now. They are, you know? Yet God took care of them. In every way God took care of her and the children. God met her emotional needs. God granted her grace because she had faith in God. She refused to draw back. Are you beginning to draw back in your heart? Are you missing faith? Do you lack faith? If you don't have faith, you find yourself jittery. When you pray for something once, two hours, and God doesn't answer, it becomes so jittery. You begin to doubt God. You can ask God to give you faith. If you lack faith, you can ask God. He will give you faith. Just like you can ask for wisdom and you will receive. Praise the Lord. And so the just shall live by faith. Any prayer you pray in faith, you are sure God will give, I mean, surely visit you and answer you. What are those issues in your life? What are those spiritual in your life? Those demands, those needs that you have. Do you think that anything is impossible for God to do? With God, all things are possible. Do you believe that? And when you believe that with God all things are possible, will you be tired of praying? Will you lose faith? Will you lose hope? Will you become weak because you have prayed and God has not answered you? He will answer speedily. He will not deny you. Do you, do you some of us maybe have problems with praying. Say, I can't pray. When I want to pray, I need down and I sleep. When I want to pray, my thoughts will be wandering away. I don't know how to pray. I can just pray a little while and I begin to sleep. The Bible tells us, Jesus tells us when he was going, he said he was going to send us a comforter. Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit, the comforter. He says he will come and he will help us. He will grant us help, even a place of prayer. Even though we don't know how to pray, the Holy Spirit of God, he will give us the language to pray. Perhaps you don't know the Holy Spirit. Or perhaps you know him only in tongues. But behold, the Holy Spirit helps one to pray. And he helps you to pray according to the mind of God. He knows the mind of God. He helps you pray in line with what God wants. And any prayer prayed according to God's will is answered. Praise the Lord. Does God answer your prayer? Or are your prayers not answered? Why wouldn't God answer your prayers? Are you a just woman? Or have you defied yourself because you have become a widow? Because of pleasure, have you lost faith? Have you lost faith in the Lord? Your faith shall make you whole. The faith of our sister made her whole. It brought victory into her life. And she's rejoicing today. My sister, my sister, you can also rejoice today. Praise the Lord. Do we believe that? That even we, God can visit us in our situations. Praise the Lord. May the Lord help us. 
that we will know we have a friend. The Lord Jesus. He is a friend indeed. Because He is a friend in need. At the point that you have a need, Jesus will answer you. Do not lose faith. Don't be weak in your prayer life. If you are weak in your prayer life, cry to Jesus. That's the only way you can have you, 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 you can call on the Lord. That's the only way you can you can you, you can communicate with Jesus through prayers. How many of us today want to depend on God? We want to pray. We want to we want to, to be to be consistent in our prayer lives. We want to believe God that even me also I will not miss that which God has for me. I will hold on to the Lord in faith and in prayer. We want to pray to the Lord now. We want to pray to God. What are those needs that you have in your life? And you think that, oh, so even me, will, this, will it ever happen? Will it ever happen? It will happen, no? God is not a respecter of persons. Praise the Lord. God is not a respecter of persons. Let us just choose those who we do go to. Those who seek Him diligently, they will find Him. Let us pray. I want us to pray. I want us to pray. The Lord is the Lord that answers prayer. He is the Lord that answers prayer. What are those issues in your life? What are those pressures? What are those temptations and trials? What are those things that the devil has done to your life? Are the things that you are in the midnight of your life now? You turn from your left, you turn to the right. You see no way. You look, to the for, for, you look forward, you look backward. You see no way. You are in the midnight of your life. Jesus is your friend, even at this moment. He is willing to give you much more than you need. He is willing to answer you beyond what you can imagine. Can you pray? Who do you always tend to when you are so pressed? Who do you tend to when problems arise? Outside Jesus, any other, any, other, any other way, any other person is an enemy to you. It's only Jesus can, that can rise up in the midnight and give you as much as you need. Jesus say, men ought always to pray and not to faint. You ought always to pray and not to faint. Do you find yourself talking always and not praying? Perhaps that's why you haven't seen the hand of God upon your life. That you are always talking. You are always lamenting. You are always complaining. You are always murmuring. And there's no time to pray. Can you call on God? Change my situation. Who do you run to? This man runs to his friend. Who do you regard as your friend? Who do you regard as your friend in the time of need? How often have those friends disappointed you? How many times did you really receive help from them? Have you not always made disappointment? Jesus is waiting to answer you speedily. He's looking for faith in your life. By faith, the elders obtained a good report. By faith, Sister Ajay has obtained a good report. By faith, several of you can, can, can share, give us reports of what God has done. And yet, God is not just choosing those He can do good to. Your faith shall make you whole.
Do you have faith in God? Do you doubt God when He speaks? By faith, you will obtain a good report. You must not wait to see before you believe. You can only hold God's word, which is tangible. The word of God that He speaks, His promises, they are like a check that you hold in your hand. You can cash it any you can write anything there and cash. We saw Anna in the Bible. When her husband died, she went into prayer. She prayed and prayed and prayed for many, 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 many years. She was reminding God of his promise to deliver Israel. At the appointed time, the Lord Jesus was born. God will always answer at the appointed time. Will you give up praying? You must be a one of faith. Prayer, faith, they bring boldness. Are you bold or you are timid? Prayer will make you bold. When you have faith and hold God in His Word, you will, you will, you will be bold to stand in the day of adversity. Perhaps you have found, you have always found it difficult to pray. You have a list of needs that you want to cry to God for. But when you go to pray, you find yourself so dry. You find yourself sleeping in the place of prayer. And yet, Jesus is waiting to give you when you ask. When you are quiet, when you don't ask, you don't receive. You are praying and saying, Lord, help me to pray. Holy Spirit, you are my helper. I am in need of help to be able to pray. Give unto me your help, even now. The just shall live by faith. Perhaps you lack boldness and faith because you are not a just woman. Sin is still lingering around your life. Could that be what is hindering your prayers? God demands purity in the life of a widow who is his wife. That when she comes and God looks at her, she will see her pure, undefined. And whatever a request he makes, the Lord will not hesitate. Are you pure in your life? Are you blameless? Are you just before the Lord? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And I want to say, without faith, it is impossible to receive anything from God. Will we pray and say, Lord, increase my faith. Help me to believe you and to doubt you no more. For the Bible says, anyone that comes to God must first of all believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them who diligently seek Him. God will reward you when you seek Him diligently. Believe Him, and it will come to pass. You are praying and saying, Lord, help me to pray. You know my weakness. I am so weak in the place of prayer. That is your, your problem. I want you to rise up as we pray together before the Lord. I say, Lord, you know, me, I'm so weak in prayer. Even though I want to pray, I'm not able to pray as I should. I give up easily. 
when I'm praying, I don't see answers. I give up easily. You want God to strengthen your prayer life today. Will you stand up and identify with you and pray with you before the Lord? You are weak in the place of prayer. And as it is said, a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. The devil keeps pushing you down now and then because you are not praying. You find yourself falling little, 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 little things because you are not praying. Your problem may be that you lack faith. You can't believe God. Promises of God seem so far away. Seems so unreal. You always want something that you can hold, you can see. God is not pleased with faithlessness. And it is a prerequisite if God must answer your prayer. Do you want to cry to the Lord and say, Lord, increase my faith? That is your cry to the Lord. Can you stand up as we identify with you and pray? We cannot obtain God's promises when we do not pray to Him, when we do not remind Him. Won't you be that widow in the Bible who prayed, who came and came? He really that judge. Do you think God will feel that you are worrying Him so much? No, He will not. God wants you to worry Him. Don't be afraid to worry God in the place of prayer. He wants you to worry Him. When you don't worry Him, He is not happy. He's not, he's, he's, he's disappointed. In Jesus' name we pray. In the name of Jesus we pray. Our Father in heaven, We thank you because you love us so much. You don't want to hide anything that is in your heart unto us. Because you want to help us. You want to take us into an inheritance. What no eye has seen, what no ear has ever heard, what no single man can imagine, you want to take us there. Even here on earth, before we reach heaven. Lord, look upon us even now. You told us that we must pray, we must ask, and we will receive. You said we should pray always and not faint. You told us that Jesus, who is our friend, we need to come to Him to ask at the point of our need. But behold us, Lord, several of us, we are unable to open our mouth and to ask our friend, our need at the hour of need. All your daughters, all your wives, as they stand out, they, start, they stand up, Lord. We call upon you. Only you can do this in their lives. They are the ones who we pray to you. People can pray for them, but they must also pray. Holy Spirit, you is our helper. Please send help upon their lives now. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, you that gives us the utterance to pray. Begin to touch their lives even from now. Help them to pray as they ought to pray. For you say that when we pray, you will answer us. Holy Spirit, you who know the mind of the Father, you will help us to pray according to the will of God so that our prayers will be answered. Release your help upon these ones now in the name of Jesus. Father, so that their problem is sick, we may not just be seen. Because of sin in their lives, you will not listen to them because you are a just God. And you are looking for those women who are just and pure before you. You will answer them speedily. Are there such ones that are standing before you, Lord, and into their lives 
there is, there, there is evil. There is impurity. There is sin. Father, have mercy upon them. Cleanse them even as they stand before you now. In the name of Jesus. 